Hi everyone. Uh, general safety for the Library Innovation Studios project covers a very wide array of subjects. Uh, first, we want to talk about attire and coming prepared. So if you have any long hair, necklaces, jewelry, want to make sure that those are tied up, tucked away, uh, otherwise not able to be pulled into equipment and machines. Uh, want to make sure there's no food or drink near the equipments. Want to make sure that uh, the machines stay as clean as long as possible. Uh, also, some of this equipment is kind of sensitive. For the most part, it was all picked because it is very robust and not able to be broken, but want to keep, in, keep that in mind when people are using the equipment. Uh, likewise, if children are going to be running around in the area, uh, keep an eye on them. Make sure that they're not banging into things with hammers and mallets. Next, I uh, want to make sure that the first aid kits that are provided with this are regularly checked for stock levels. I uh, want to make sure that if anyone needs something, you know, it's there and available. Uh, also, tornado and storm policies are going to be dictated by the building that you're in and not by this grant. Small fires can occur as a result of some of this equipment. Uh, if a small fire does occur, we have a very specific process we want to take. Number one, uh, we want to stop the machine. This will generally remove the source of ignition and stop the fire from occurring. Uh, next, if that doesn't stop it, go ahead and smother the flame with a smaller piece of wood, uh, removing the oxygen from the flame. If that doesn't work, we have a spray bottle of water that you can use to spray and cool off the fire, hopefully stopping it. And our very final step that we want to take is a fire extinguisher. Now that is a electronic safe fire extinguisher, but it is not electronic friendly, meaning we are going to have to take it back to Lincoln, completely disassemble it, clean it out, uh, and then bring it back. It's not the easiest process. Uh, it won't damage the equipment, but we want to make sure that we're using that as a last resort. Also, uh, sharps. Want to make sure that if you are disposing of any sharp equipment, uh, that you do so properly. That means a sharp container uh, or the proper bin. Want to make sure we don't just toss that into the trash bin. A clean shop is a safe shop. Uh, thank you in advance for cleaning up for someone before you if they did not clean up after themselves. Uh, you can always help people out by making trash bins available where people are working at all times uh, so that they have a place to put their trash when they're done. Electronic files, so the desktops of these computers are not safe places to store files that you're working on. You want to make sure that you save it onto a flash drive, a hard drive, uh, somewhere external, or feel free to use a cloud service. I'm a really big fan of Google Drive, uh, but if you don't like Google, Box and Dropbox are both really good alternatives. Uh, also, flash drives are available for purchase through this grant, so if you need to buy one, go ahead. Trainings occur uh, at the discretion of the library. Uh, they should occur about once every three or so weeks, uh, more often if more people need them. Each training is going to consist of walking through how to use the equipment safely uh, so you don't hurt yourself and you don't hurt the machine. Uh, you're going to walk through the SOP booklet and learn everything you need to do in order to safely use that machine. I want to point out here the start menu. Uh, we have all of these softwares and all these programs that are easily and quickly accessible via the start button. Uh, so if you ever aren't sure what to use, go ahead and start there and see what's available. At these trainings, uh, you will learn again how to safely use the equipment. I do want to point out that you're not going to be an ultimate expert master at all these machines. Uh, that's something that you have to learn through trial and error and figuring stuff out. Uh, personally, whenever I laser something, I always plan to have at least one practice piece and go from there. So. Uh, again, you're not going to be an expert from it, but that's what we do. That's the fun part of it. Reserving machines. Uh, a lot of the equipment does take a good deal of time in order to work with. So want to make sure that we are reserving them well in advance. Uh, you know, if there's an open spot in the next hour and someone walks up and wants to use it, by all means, go for it. Uh, but we also want to make sure that we're being fair and letting everyone have a chance to use it. I want to make sure that no one's hogging all the equipment. Makerspace policies were provided with all of the studios and all the grants here. Uh, in general, they break down into three policies. We have general, safety, and project. Make sure to review your Makerspace policies and see how they work. One specific policy we want to touch on here is the age policy. We have three categories. We have unsupervised use, supervised use, and young use. Uh, unsupervised use, we're comfortable with those people using the equipment 100% by themselves, not being watched. Uh, supervised, we want to make sure that there's an adult present in the room that can spot potential hazards and problems as they occur. Uh, and then finally, young use. These are for people that may be a little bit younger 
then we're comfortable using the equipment by themselves. Uh, they do need to have a trained adult with them on the equipment. The child is the one that you know is dictating what to do, what they want the design to look like, but ultimately the adult is the one pressing go on the machine. Also, we wanna talk about our weapon policy. Uh, no weapons can be made, modified, or customized using any of the library equipment. Uh, and that means anything that could be used for a weapon, you know, a sheath, a holster, anything of that nature. After today, uh, you're probably gonna have some problems, things that you run into from time to time. Uh, we've got a four-step process for how you get help. Number one, I'm gonna ask you to read through the SOP booklet. Uh, that has a ton of good information and we update it from time to time, so take a look at that. Uh, the second one, I'll have you look through the Slack history. Someone else may have had that problem and they may have uh, solutions for you. Uh, number three, I'll ask you to post to Slack and ask for some help there. Uh, and then finally, number four, during my office hours, I can remote into these computers and give you kind of a one-on-one -on -one help uh, and we can help you out right there. Speaking of, my office hours are Monday to Friday, 2 to 3 p.m. Central Time. The best way to get a hold of me during that time is uh, via Slack. So when you do run into those issues, feel free to hit me up on there and we'll get in touch. And that's everything we've got. Thank you much.